For people who don't know Azra, just tell us a little bit about her. Azra, um, in my opinion, was an extraordinary human being. She lived for 24 years uh, on this earth, and I think that um, she touched so many people. She lived life to the full. She was compassionate, warm, feisty, fiery. She had a very, very strong sense of injustice. She was my only child. In July 2020, police turned up here at Nevers Kamal's home in North London to explain that her daughter Azra had died in an accident falling from a bridge. Over a year later, more officers arrived on her doorstep looking visibly distressed. It reminded me of when the two police officers arrived to tell me that Azra had passed. Mm. Um, there was this anxiety and they had this level of distress. I'm thinking, I don't have any family members, so... Yeah. Why would they come at half eight? They said to me, um, it's to do with Azra. And for that moment, I'm thinking, I said to them, well, Azra's dead. They explained that Azra's body had been raped by an electrician in Tunbridge Wells Hospital mortuary. It would emerge she was one of at least 80 victims. He'd raped Azra hours before Nevers visited her daughter in the mortuary. What you're about to hear is distressing. I had spent two wonderful hours in the mortuary, um, sleeping with her, and that gave me some sort of comfort. Little did I know that my daughter had been violated prior to that day and the evening of that day. So whilst I'm stroking my daughter's hair, sleeping on her hair, A man had crawled all over her skin and there's me kissing and cuddling and saying my last goodbyes. And that's quite awful, quite awful. However, um, it is not Azra's shame, it is not my shame. Maybe some would just bury their heads in the sand and not want to know any more detail, but you've actively kind of sought out the facts. You wanted to know how long. Yes. When did he come in? Yes. What access did he have? Yes. You've found all of that out already. Yes. And I tell you why, Jay, Jason, is that if you allow, for me personally, if you allow yourself to wonder what if, what happened, how could it have happened, how long, what did that person do, we spend a lot of time and energy creating confusion and pain in your mind. For me to have facts, I can focus on those facts and I can focus my energy on that. And I will never bury my head in any sand and nor would Avazra. I've thought long and hard about this interview and I know that Azra would be asking me, tell the story. So you do have the detail and you do know the shocking thing seems to be that he had access for 20 minutes, half an hour. Well, I'll give you the details, Jason. The first time was 13 minutes. The second time was 15 minutes. And the day that I visited Azra and spent quality time and my last time with Azra was for 35 minutes. To understand this, Nevers asked the NHS Trust for a map of the mortuary. She learned that David Fuller had swipe card access because he sometimes did maintenance work there and that he knew staff went home at 4pm. Porters might still visit the receiving area delivering bodies, but the same fridges had doors opening onto the post-mortem area where Fuller committed his crimes. Here there was no CCTV until recently and the fridge doors were unlocked. Fuller gained access through the utility rooms, but he still passed cameras en route and needed to swipe in. He had entered the Morgan autopsy area thousands of times, not hundreds, but thousands of times. And no one ever stopped him or asked, well, what's this guy doing in here? He always made himself available to the mortuary staff. They thought that the perpetrator was a great guy. Um, and, and basically, he groomed them. Uh, he groomed them. Uh, 
they became compliant. They never questioned him. They so you've met some of those Moultrie staff when you went yes. down to see Azra. Yes, I did. And uh, very, very good staff. Uh, but uh, you could argue that who would think that someone would do such a thing? Mm. However, we have swipe cards and cameras for a reason. There was no logs about what he was doing in there. There was no logs of how many times he was going in there. He would actually abuse women whilst porters were bringing in dead bodies. After Fuller pleaded guilty to double murder and the details of his mortuary crimes were revealed, the chief executive of Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells NHS Trust made this statement. Good afternoon. I want to say on behalf of the Trust how shocked and appalled I am by the criminal activity by David Fuller in our hospital mortuary that has been revealed in court this week. And most importantly, I want to apologise to the families of the victims of these terrible crimes. Will you resign? In a meeting in October, Nevers told Miles Scott he should resign. I said to him, if you're really, truly sorry, surely you will take responsibility and step down. Nevers travelled to Kent for Fuller's trial to hear how his mortuary victims ranged in age from nine to 100 years old and that he also stood accused of double murder. If it was his only crime, Fuller would face a maximum of two years for what he'd done to Azra. Nevers says she will campaign to make legal guidance and sentencing stronger. If he wasn't facing murder charges, the sentencing for this kind of offence, probably, in your view, pretty minor. Men and women up and down the country will be appalled by what they're listening to, what they've read about. And I remind them that if this was your loved one, you would roar with rage. And I'm silently roaring and I'm beseeching people that make laws to create a law that this becomes an offence and the appropriate sentencing is passed down. And I trust the law in this country, and I trust the people of this country, and I hope they realise that they need to shout and scream and say, we need to respect the dead. Azra was a friend of mine and helped me produce some of my reports here at Sky News. And Azra, I know as someone who, when she saw domestic abuse, for example, or violence towards women, she would go over to the guy who was doing that and kick them out of the house. Yeah, that, that's uh, live stories of Azra yeah. with her voice. Yeah, and so when she had a voice, she really spoke up for women. Absolutely. And people might say, oh, well, she was dead, she doesn't know anything about it. And you're more of the victim than she is. How do you feel about that? Because well, you're the one that lives with it. My daughter was the victim, and all those 98 people were victims, because I have respect for the dead. So they are victims. I have now, I am the victim's mother. I've tried to protect Azra all her life. And when she really was helpless, lying there still, being raped and abused, I couldn't scream out, couldn't call me, couldn't call the police. I will ensure that her voice is heard and justice is served. And that will be my mission. Nevers believes the best tribute to her daughter is for lessons to be learned. The Hospital Trust has launched an independent investigation into whether anything more could have been done. Jason Farrell, Sky News.